Inside every cell of your body, there's a tiny instruction manual, a long molecular code that tells the cell what to build, when to grow, and how to function. This code doesn't look like words or numbers. It looks like a twisting ladder made of chemicals. This is DNA. And the science of understanding how DNA stores, reads, and passes on information is called genetics. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a long molecule shaped like a double helix. Think of it as a spiral staircase with four types of steps. The nitrogen bases, adenine A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, guanine, G. They pair like this, A with T and C with G. The order of these letters, A, T, C, G, forms a biological code. A code that tells your cells how to make proteins, which in turn do almost every important job in your body. DNA isn't just information, and it's the blueprint of life. Now, DNA is extremely long. If you stretched out the DNA in one cell, it would be about 2 meters long. But your cells are microscopic, so DNA has to fold tightly. It wraps around proteins called histones, forming coils, loops, and condensed structures called chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent. These chromosomes carry genes, which are specific sequences of DNA that code for specific traits. A gene isn't the trait itself, it's the instructions for building the trait. So what is a gene? A gene is a section of DNA that contains the instructions to make a protein, and proteins do the real work. They build tissues, move molecules, create pigment, transmit signals, form enzymes, everything. Different versions of a gene are called alleles. For example, one allele might code for more melanin, brown eyes, another for less melanin, blue eyes. The trait you express depends on which alleles you carry and how active they are. This combination of alleles is your genotype. The result, the trait you see, is your phenotype. Now, how does DNA actually turn into something physical? Through a simple two-step process, transcription and translation. Step one, transcription. Inside the nucleus, an enzyme called RNA polymerase copies a gene's DNA sequence into a molecule called mRNA. Messenger RNA. Think of mRNA as a photocopy of the gene that can leave the nucleus. Step two, translation. The mRNA moves to a ribosome, the cell's protein factory. There, the ribosome reads the RNA three letters at a time. Each three-letter sequence, called a codon, codes for a specific amino acid. Amino acids link together to form a protein. So DNA, RNA, protein. This flow of information is the core of genetics. It's how genes become traits. But genetics isn't just about making proteins. It's also about inheritance, passing traits to the next generation. When cells divide, DNA has to copy itself. This happens during DNA replication. The two strands separate and new complementary strands form. Because A pairs with T and C pairs with G, each new DNA molecule is an almost perfect copy. Almost is important, sometimes mistakes slip in. Mutations. A mutation is a change in the DNA sequence. Mutations can be a single letter flipped, letters deleted, extra letters inserted, entire gene sections duplicated, moved, or reversed. Some mutations do nothing, they're neutral. Some break proteins, causing disease. Some improve function providing the raw material for evolution. Mutations are the reason life changes over generations. They are small errors that sometimes lead to big differences. Now let's talk heredity. How traits pass from parents to offspring. You get one set of chromosomes from your mother, one from your father, meaning you carry two alleles for most genes. Some alleles are dominant. One copy is enough to show the trait. Others are recessive. You need two copies to show it. That's why two brown-eyed parents can still have a blue-eyed child. They both carry a recessive allele that only appears when matched. But genetics is rarely that simple. There are more complex patterns. Incomplete dominance. Traits blend. Codominance. Both alleles show. Polygenic traits. Controlled by many genes. Height. Skin color. Multifactorial traits influenced by genes plus environment. Your DNA sets the instructions. Your environment helps decide how strongly they are followed. This brings us to something important, epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how genes can be turned on or off without changing the DNA sequence. This happens through chemical tags added to DNA or histones. Think of your genome as a library. Epigenetics decides which books are open, bookmarked, or sealed shut. Stress, diet, sleep, temperature, exercise. They can all influence epigenetic activity. These changes don't rewrite the DNA code, 
but they change how the code is used. Sometimes these epigenetic marks can even be inherited. Not all traits come from one gene. In fact, most traits like intelligence, personality, blood pressure, body shape, metabolism come from interactions between many genes. Some genes boost activity, others suppress it. Some regulate hundreds of other genes. Genetics isn't one gene equals one result. It's a complex system of interactions, like software built from thousands of modules working together. But to predict traits, geneticists use statistical models. You might have seen a Punnett square, a simple grid showing inheritance probabilities. It works well for traits controlled by a single gene, but for complex traits, we use bigger tools. Genome-wide association studies, linkage mapping, polygenic risk scores. These tools scan entire genomes to find patterns connecting DNA variations with traits. We're now in an era where genetics is no longer theory. It's measurable. But how do we actually read DNA? With DNA sequencing, machines that read the letters of the genome. In 2003, the Human Genome Project mapped all 3 billion DNA bases. Today, we can sequence a full human genome in a day. This lets us detect mutations, diagnose diseases, trace ancestry, and understand genetic risks. The more genomes we sequence, the clearer the patterns become. And genetics isn't just about reading DNA. We can now edit it. Enter CRISPR, a gene editing tool that works like molecular scissors. CRISPR can cut DNA at a precise location and edit, replace, or silence genes. This technology is revolutionizing biology with potential treatments for genetic diseases, cancers, viral infections, and more. We are learning not just how to observe the genetic code, but how to rewrite it. Genetics also shows how connected all life is. Every living organism uses DNA. Every living thing uses the same four letters, A, T, C, G, and the genetic code is universal. The gene for insulin in humans can be inserted into bacteria, and bacteria can produce insulin. A fluorescent gene from jellyfish can be added to plants to make them glow. Life is modular. Different species use the same biological language. So here's the big idea. Your DNA influences almost everything about you, but it doesn't determine everything. Your genes give you potential. Your environment shapes that potential. Your experiences modify your gene activity and your choices influence how your brain and body develop. Genetics sets the stage. Life performs the play. So what is genetics really? It's the study of the code that builds living things. A code made of molecules copied through time, passed from parents to children, shaped by mutations, regulated by chemistry, and transformed by the environment. Genetics explains why you look the way you do, why organisms differ, why species evolve, why diseases occur, why life works at all. And today, genetics is more than knowledge. It's a toolkit. We can sequence DNA, edit genes, map traits, design treatments, and understand life at its deepest level. The genetic code is not just information, it is the blueprint of all biology. And we're finally learning how to read it.